Yes. All right. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Uh, thank you so much for joining uh, today. Um, we have His Grace uh, Chandra Prabhuji uh, from um, Boise, I Idaho, um, to enlighten us with the topic um, Six Enemies of Our Mind. Um, thank you so much, Prabhuji, for joining. Um, please take over the call, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And thank you in advance for tolerating me. It's, it's, uh, it's actually a very big honor to be able to speak in front of Vaishnavas uh, and dispense any kind of knowledge uh, that is not coming through, coming through me, literally, uh, since we are just simply conduits. So today I wanted to kind of address um, uh, some issues regarding the enemies of the mind. <clears throat> and we have a lot of those that are attacking the mind uh, through the uh, current state of affairs that are going on all over the globe, uh, particularly here, uh, even though we're dealing with I issues with, with the pandemic, um, we have some corollary issues um, dealing with uh, excessive heat. So uh, where I'm at currently, it's been um, at least 15 days of uh, 100 plus degree temperatures. And one particular uh, thing that happened about two weeks ago in Portland, Oregon, and also Salem, Oregon, the temperature reached 116 degrees. And that is so unusual um, for the, the valley in Oregon. It's a lot of trees. They're close to the coast. Um, they usually don't get hotter than we would here in the area that, I, that I'm at. So it's really unusual. And then it's been related to a lot of death. So we're gonna just talk about how these um, Alti Baltic Ecclesia, Alti Optic Ecclesia, Devic Ecclesia, all these things have a tendency to impact our, our devotion. So uh, I'll just get right into this. Um, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Narayam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narotamam. Devam Sarasphim Vyasam Tato Jayare Vyat. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisance unto the personality of Godhead Narayan and unto Narayan, and to Narayan, Narayan Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being. And then to Mother Saraswati, the goddess, goddess of learning, and to Shri Vyasadeva, the author. Shandata Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana, Triti Antasto Vyapdani, Vitanoti Suhitsatam, Shri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of the Godhead, who is the Paramatma Super Soul in everyone's heart, and a benefactor to the truth of the Bodhi, he cleanses the desire for material enjoyment from the heart of the Bodhi who has developed an urge to hear his messages, which are in themselves virtuous when properly heard and chanted. Nashta praya shabat rishu nityam bhagavata sevayam bhagavati utama shloki bhaktir bhagavati naishtiki by regular attendance in classes of the Srimad Bhagavatam and by rendering of service to the pure devotee all of his troubles into the heart is almost completely destroyed and loving service into the Personality of God here, who is praised with transcendental songs is established as a revolutionary act. So, what I wanted to do is to read from Srimad <clears throat> Bhagavatam uh, 5.14.27. Um, I'll just go to the translation. In this materialistic life, there are many difficulties, as I have just mentioned, and all of these are insurmountable. In addition, there are difficulties arising from so-called happiness, distress, attachment. And here are some of these um, um, enemies of the mind, hate, fear, false prestige, illusion, madness, lamentation, bewilderment, greed, envy, enmity, insult, hunger, thirst, tribulation, disease, birth, old age, and death. All these combined together give the materialistic conditioned soul Nothing but misery. So the purport there is that the conditioned soul has to accept all these conditions simply to enjoy sense gratification in this world. 
Although people declare themselves great scientists, economists, philosophers, politicians, and sociologists, they are actually nothing but rascals. Therefore, they have been described as Mudas and Naradamas. We see this in the Bhagavad Gita 715. Nanam duskritino mudaha, prapya yante naradama, mayaya prahita jana, asuram babam ashtata. Quote, those miscreants who are grossly foolish, lowest among mankind, whose knowledge is stolen by illusion, and who partake in atheistic nature, demons, do not surrender unto me. Further, it says, due to, due to their foolishness, all these materialistic, uh, materialists, excuse me, are described in the Bhagavad Gita as Naradamas. They have attained the human form in order to get release from material bondage, but instead of doing so, they become further embarrassed amid the miserable uh, material conditions. Therefore, they are Naradamas, the lowest of men. One may ask, whether scientists, philosophers, economists, and mathematicians are also Naradamas, the lowest of men. And the Supreme Personality of the replies that they are, they are because they have no actual knowledge. They are simply proud of their false prestige and position. These are also enemies of the mind. Actually, they do not know how to get relief from the material conditions and renovate their spiritual life of transcendental bliss and knowledge. Um, consequently, they waste time and energy in the search for so-called happiness. These are the qualifications of demons. In the Bhagavad Gita, it says that when one has all these demoniac qualities, he becomes a Muna. You can probably reference that in the divine and demoniac. Due to this, he envies the Supreme Personality of God here. Therefore, birth after birth, he is born into the demoniac family, and he transmigrates from one demoniac body to another. Thus, he forgets his relationship with the Supreme or Krishna and remains at a Naradama and in an abominable condition, life after life. Om Jnanam Tadaman Hasya Gnanjana Shivakya Chakshuru Milishin Yena Tasvai Shri Kadave Namaha Shri Tatanya Manopishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Dupa Kadamayam Tadakhi Swatapratikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Guta Padagavalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shcha Shri Rupam Sagra Tutam Sahagana Vaganata Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahita Krishna Vitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Bada Sahangana Vidika Sri Vatsa Kavitam Shta He Krishna Kuru Sundar Dinabandu Jikatvite Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radha Vinda Varishwari Vrishparam Stiti Devi Parinam Hari Priye Vanchika Pakuru Krishna Kripa Sindhu Vedacha, Patiti Nam Padna Vido Vaishnavi Do Vivo Nuham. Shri Krishna Titanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Atvaita Gadad Hashivas Sri Gora Bhakti Vrindam. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So as we <coughs> dissect <clears throat> some of the finer points in the in this particular shloka. Uh, if Mataji, if you can put up the um, platelet that I had shared with you, I want us to <clears throat> take a close look at this ladder of material engagement and the other half being the ladder of spiritual engagement. <clears throat> so we can see that we have this idea of envy. <clears throat> um, and we see ignorance, anger, lust, and greed. Uh, Kama, uh, Loba, and Matsya, uh, Matsarya. Uh, we look at all these different principles, but <clears throat> as Krishna is saying, 
that the living entity is actually envying the Lord. <clears throat> and as soon as we start to envy, um, the living entity, if in the spiritual environment, has to be injected, if we use uh, terms nowadays with uh, getting the jab and all this stuff, you're being just injected into the material energy. So this envy is also synonymous with jealousy. And so there's different levels to envy. One being, um, we understand there can be a spiritual envy. And that means that I really would like to serve like this Prabhu or Mataji is serving Krishna or their spiritual master. And that's actually pretty healthy because actually that's not the envy that's actually trying to destroy the living, li living entity or the, the Paramatma. But in the material world, <clears throat> when we experience envy, um, they have sub levels as well. One, you discount a person's qualifications. We often hear this. Well, she only got that position because she's a woman. Or he only got that position because of some diversity program. Or, or he's this, and it dismisses the qualifications. Now, whether that's true or not, even if it's true, it's still in me. Because if you are qualified, for a particular position and you don't get it, um, there are reasons for that, particularly if it's a devotee. And I always are, am challenged by that. I'm thinking Krishna is saving me from some calamity by not being in that position. Or if Krishna gives me the position, he's trying to humble me <laughs> in, in the particular position that I'm in. So, so with this, we have the idea of false prestige that also comes along with envy. And we also know false prestige as pride. They kind of, I'm proud that um, I have a position and actually I'm not really qualified. But we see that a lot in organizations. We have managers or people in particular positions that have these, um, management authority and they don't have a clue you know actually what they're doing so it's amazing i was just talking about this uh at uh, one of my co-workers yesterday we work in a prison and he was talking about his experience in the military and he says it's amazing how organizations function under so much chaos because literally there are people who do not know what they're doing so <clears throat> so we have to be careful not to envy those people who don't know what they're doing because that also implicates us in the the um uh the prize of envy and i say it's a prize because we're all racing look i have this badge on me i have so much pride i have so much i can do so many things so as krishna is saying and Prabhupada is saying in the purport these are qualifications of demons and so we have to be very, very careful about our association that we can actually take that association rather than giving the association that Chandramali once talked about when we're in difficult environments, how do, you know, how do we avoid becoming like them, the people that are very difficult? And the one thing is like, we have to give them association. So where does Maya come in? And all this, as we look at all these different layers of lust, greed, um, because they're all reverse, they're reverse sides, such as, you know, they, they, they sometimes um, say that the gopis have lust for, for Krishna, right? But the difference is Krishna is the object of that satisfaction, as opposed to, I lust after someone because I'm trying to have my senses gratified. 
So this is really about, this lust is about Krishna's gratification. And then greed, uh, if you've been in the movement long enough, uh, we talk about be greedy for association. Uh, devotional soldier, be greedy for those kind of things. Greedy for uh, devotional service. So that's the kind of greed that can be on the spiritual. Uh, false prestige, no, there's no application for that, <laughs> you know, in any spiritual sense. Because there's false. Now you can say prestigious. You know, I'm in a prestigious organization, right? Uh, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness is prestigious. And you can be prideful that there's so many scholarly or very saintly individuals that are in there. So you can have that. So you can use prestige that, but you can drop the whole thing false. False means conditional. Today it's this, tomorrow it's something else. And then attachment. We can see attachment that's in there. Attachment can be um, things that actually are anchors that pull you down. You can see in this platelet, you see um, uh, a devotee, he has ropes or chains and he's being pulled. What direction? He's being pulled opposite the, the spiritual ladder. So we have to kind of tra tra traverse these things. And, and then the, and the last, I believe, would be anger. So how do we use anger? Well, we have the story of Hanuman, right? Or you can even, for those who are Christians, uh, they have the story of Jesus. He's in, he's in a mosque or in a temple, and he sees gambling that's going on. And so because it's his father's house, he's displaying this, this transcendental anger. And we see the same with Hanuman. Hanuman is, um, he's on a mission. He's trying to find out where Sita is, and um, he's he's willing to burn down Lanka, you know. So he's using that anger in, in, in the service. But we understand anger to be uh, very detriment, detrimental uh, for our spiritual uh, uh, advancement. Um, what is it, Dehi no Ashman? No, it's Dhyayato Vishayam Sankhya. Sangyat Peshu Vijayate. Sangyat Sanjayate. Kama Kama Krodha Vijayate. So we have this anger, Krodha. We see that it, that's in there. And so we see that directly associated with attachment. So when that attachment is there, <clears throat> and it's, it's not fulfilled, then um, it turns into something. Uh, yeah. I also very need to be able to look. Someone has their uh, mic on, if you can use that, I appreciate that. Hare Krishna. Uh, and then along with that, the next verse is Krodo Bhavati Sammoha, Sammoha Smriti Viprama, Smriti Brahmsat Burinashu, Burinasha, Burinashu. So we see Moha, we see this uh, this um, the these delusion um, that's that's coming in. Uh, we become very delusional. So, so, so we, this is, again, false prestige. See, a lot of these things can mix together very nicely, um, you know, directly as a result to our, um, our, our particular impediments for, um, to pursue, uh, you know, Krishna consciousness. So our aim <clears throat> is to understand how these enemies are being, um, imported to us in the particular uh, predic predicament that we're in. So as I was mentioning earlier, uh, where I'm at, we have the success of heat. So um, heat, in a lot of ways, can be a symbol for anger. And you should see how people act when they're exposed to extreme heat. Um, so we're looking at one of the other things is how um, crime has been exacerbated in this country as, as a result of the excessive heat that, they're, that we're dealing with. So now let's deal with the concept of ignorance. So we're dealing with some ignorance. Um, the information that we're getting about any particular thing, whether it's an election, or something medically that's going on, um, you know, even our own society, 
Um, how are we dealing with the information? Is it solid information? And for that matter, the information that we're getting, is it, does it, does it, can it pass through the Sostra test? In other words, who's the authority? Um, how has the process been tested? We look at these things um, from a medical or scientific uh, view, you know, um, empirical um, knowledge. So we start looking at these things and there's a lot of um, anxiety around it. So people willing to go to means to fight each other, whether in stores, because they, they either uh, have some, some facial covering, if they don't have some, if they think this thing is bogus, they, think they, they don't think it's bogus. So you have a lot of these um, issues. So, <clears throat> and, and then we have other weather events that we're experiencing on the um, East Coast of the United States where there's excessive flooding that's taking, taking place. So we have these extremes. So what does that, what does that mean? Well, it means that it keeps people off balance from their spiritual quest. And why is all of it happening at this particular moment? Well, I like to use an example of maybe a, maybe a sports example. So let's say you have a sports team, um, soccer, and the soccer team averages 15 goals uh, every match. And they just overwhelm everyone. So generally what happens is when a team like that is so successful, the opposition has to pose um, strategies that, that will stop them. And that might even be cheating strategies. So I'm gonna jump from that to the battlefield of Kuruchepa. So <clears throat> when the Pandavas were fighting, their cousins, um, there's a situation with Abhimanu. Abhimanu was fighting so ferociously. And the rule was that <clears throat> you have one Kshatriya fights another Kshatriya. But in this case, these were senior Kshatriyas that were fighting Abhimanu. So they had, he had a disadvantage. So because when the opposition may see that the, the um, other party may be very superior to them in a lot of ways, they figure out ways to cheat. So one way you can look at what's going on in this particular age that we're at, <clears throat> that somehow or another there's a threat that God consciousness can prevail. And so you know, in, in order to uh, keep people from prevailing, from, from their consciousness raising, we have to pull all off stops. And I've experienced that personally when, when I deal with opposition or many of you devotees too, when you're in your particular jobs, people have issues with you. They see qualities in you that they envy. <laughs> so what they do is they put obstacles in front of you. So that should let you know, even in your own personal spiritual life, when you have obstacles, there's always a risk of success. So Maya has to throw up these uh, particular uh, roadblocks in order to keep us from uh, making spiritual progress. There was also something else that I wanted to share uh, with regard to six enemies. Uh, this is from Srimad Bhagavatam 7.8.10. Dashum Purashanna Vichitya Lampato Manyantar Ekaswa Jita Vishudesh Dasya Jitatmano Yasya Samasya Dehinam Sadhyo Swa Moha Prabhava Kuta Pare. So, translation In the former times, there were many fools like you who did not conquer the six enemies that steal away the wealth of the body. These fools were very proud, thinking, quote, I have conquered all enemies in all the 10 directions, unquote. But if a person is victorious over the six enemies and is equipoised toward all living beings, 
for him, there is no enemies. Enemies are merely imagined by one in ignorance. Enemies are merely imagined by one in ignorance. The purport's very nice too. It's short, so I'll just go through it. In this material world, everyone thinks that he has conquered his enemies, not understanding that his enemies are his uncontrolled mind and five senses. In this material world, everyone has become a servant of the senses. Originally, everyone is a servant of Krishna. But in ignorance, one forgets this, and thus one is engaged in the service of Maya through lust, lusty desires, anger, greed, illusion, madness, and jealousy. Everyone is actually dependent on, on the reactions of material laws, but still one thinks himself independent and thinks that he has conquered all directions. In conclusion, one may think that he has many enemies, <clears throat> that, that has many enemies, is an ignorant man, whereas one who is in Krishna consciousness knows that there are no enemies but those within oneself. The controlled mind and senses, key word is the uncontrolled mind and senses, these are the real enemies. So <clears throat> as we're going through, and I was feeling this probably on Wednesday, I woke up and I was thinking something wrong. So something just wasn't feeling right. So I'm finding now that that we're in this different age. I'm actually feeling the experiences of everything. And I don't have to be on the news. I just feel it in my body. So this is how potent this energy is. And then it starts to attack the mind. So anytime we're feeling a certain way, uh, if it's south of anything good, real happiness, um, we're actually are being inundated by this energy that Maya has to suppress us. And she does such a wonderful job. And it is Prabhupada said that uh, as soon as one starts to chant Hare Krishna, that person is declaring war on Maya. So we're seeing how this war is become very, very intense. It can only mean that there's some spiritual efficacy that is taking place at this time that Maya has to ramp things up. And the demons are being used. They're thinking we're in control. We can, we can um, minimize society, uh, restrict resources. Um, even some places are experiencing uh, shortages and rice. I know India was doing that maybe a year or two ago. There was a rice shortage. And, um, there's so many things. These things are artificially induced. So you can see this is coming from Maya, but these demons with this false prestige are under the assumption that they're the doer. And you can see this also, again, a divine and demoniac. You see those two things in the Bhagavad Gita is there, you know, I shall become wealthy. I shall kill all of my enemies. I, I shall give them charity. I, 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 a hum amazing. So you're, you're having a lot of these things that we're experiencing and I'm, I guess the message that I'm trying to deliver is that that's a sign that the Krishna consciousness is extremely effective, so effective that you have to have a lot of these extremities or extremes um, that have to bombard us because it felt like maybe two or three years ago, it was one or two things happened. But now it's like everything's going. And then you have the threat of war, uh, China and India or China and, or, or Pakistan and the US. You have a lot of these things that are going. There's always this threat. And just recently, um, Japan released some viral video about we should uh, drop nuclear bombs on Japan. So it's just trying to get people more in, in anxiety. And, and that's, that's the goal. So that must mean that there's some divinity that is very, very strong and present, and we just need to hang on to it. We need to stay the course and not be distracted by so many, um, so many of these anomalies that are that are coming up. And just remembering, these enemies of the mind are also enemies of the demoniac mind. 
and they like to manifest these things because this is their reality. Their reality is not absolute. It's just temporal. So <clears throat> if you have any comments, you know, please jump in and we don't have to be so formal. But if you have any comments or personal experiences that you've had um, with the environment, the nature of things of this today, and on this ladder of envy, ignorance, lust, greed, false pride, and uh, and and uh, attachment. And we haven't dealt with the other, but I, I think it's important to kind of focus on those things which are in the red. Um, that's like our debit and see how we can make a profit from understanding how to utilize those. So are there any comments or questions or anything that um, any of you devotees would like to uh, add? Sri Devi Mataji, please. Please accept my humble obeisances, dear devotees. Please accept my humble obeisances, Chandra Prabhu. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Bhakti Tita Maharaj and Chandra Mali Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me of the importance of uh, gaining mastery over the senses. You know, as you were speaking, it was just as you were speaking, I was thinking about a situation which has just arisen in my own life just now. I'll describe it very briefly. This is New Orleans where I'm living. So, you know, maybe I should feel thankful that for one year, nothing happened. But the other day I stepped out and someone had smashed my mirror, the driver's side mirror. They had totally torn out the, the actual mirror part. They had smashed the whole unit and they had stamped it or beaten it to pieces and all the smashed pieces and they thrown it on the ground. Then I looked around in my car, the trunk was open. I don't leave my trunk open. So I went and closed it and I kept thinking, what's going on? And then I put two and two together. They opened the trunk, found there was nothing to steal. There was just, you know, old stuff there. They got mad. And so they decided to take maybe a baseball bat or something, smash the driver's side mirror, then stamped on it or beat that and threw it on the ground just to show me how angry they are that there was nothing valuable in the car to steal. And I said, okay, here's evidence. Krishna, I'm living in Kali Yuk. So I order a you know a car mirror to come. July fifth is the order. By eighth we will deliver it, madam. We'll send it to you right at once. This that eighth goes, ninth goes, tenth goes. Then suddenly I see I'm tracking it all the time. Uh, delivery will happen only on thirteen. Something which is supposed to come on eighth is now coming on thirteen. I say what's going on? And then the next thing I know, part has been delivered. It's not delivered to me. It's come somewhere in the vicinity. I don't know where. I run around the neighborhood to see where my car, driver's side mirror, car. can't find anything. Go back to the shipper. And then they say, sorry, ma'am, we'll send you another part or we will give you a refund. I said, what's the use of a refund? I need the part. Okay, we'll send it again. So here we are. And then I call up and I say, is everything okay this time? Oh, we don't have your apartment number. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, what in the world? Isn't this the same situation that happened the first time around? You're doing the same mistake again. I can't believe this. So I'm now in a tizzy. I'm frantic because now it's 15 days. I'm not being able to even go to the grocery store to buy food. So I'm thinking to myself, what is Krishna trying to teach me here? And I'm calling them up. I'm getting a little, you know, heavy with them. I'm not really angry inside because I know everything happens by Krishna's plan. But I'm pretending a little heat, you know, just to get them moving and to do the job properly. But what is Krishna trying to teach me? Yes. This is I have not gained mastery over my senses, that's for sure. Because I'm irritated at this whole situation. I want it. I want it now. I want to do things. And Krishna says, no, you're going to get it when I want you to get it, not when you think you should get it. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, um, I can unpack a lot of, cause I'm trying to relate that to myself. There are a lot of things, of course, you know, in the old tradition of the Vedas with the Brahmanas, <clears throat> the Brahmanas, they knew specific days to engage in any particular activity. They look for days. They, in other words, they knew numerology. So I don't know if you follow things like Mercury retrograde, if you do, you would have known that um, 
during the month of June and July, Mercury retrograde means things are in reverse. So anytime you try to purchase something big and there's specific days, even the demons know this, even the demons back in the day, they knew specific day. This is the day we want to do an attack. This is the day we want to do. They actually still do that these days. They just don't advertise it. So generally what happens is because of the way the material energy works, it's impacting people, not in a marginal way. It just marginalizes marginal people and it impacts them in a major way. So I was thinking when you said that, I want you to do this meditation. When I criticize someone, when I'm heavily critical on someone, it's almost like me breaking into their car. Right. And I try to smash everything, the windows, the this, this, that, and the other. And then I find out there was nothing there. <laughs> you find that there's nothing. I did all this criticism, and basically I'm upset. I have this internal one. This is the this is the person that breaks into your car. I am upset because I thought they had something that I wanted, and it wasn't. I'm frustrated now. So now let me destroy things. This is a Robin mentality. <laughs> it's completely, but we have to be careful that we're getting a fraction of a reaction. Because I had the same thing. I had in my at, at work, people would smash my door, right? I had two dents in my door and they just kept it, they kept it moving. They didn't say anything. But I knew I was in personal turmoil internally. And I was seeing things reflected externally. So now when I see those things and they happen, <clears throat> um, I laugh. I like Krishna's clearly showing me it's not so much what someone did to me. It's more on what I'm doing to me and how I'm reacting to it. So if you really think about it, okay, your car is, you know, damaged and you couldn't get a part. But just put yourself in South Africa. People are looting. You know, people are being beaten up and, or people being shot, people being violated, you know, it all depends, but we don't care about that. We just, we're kind of focused on our locus of control. So when we're really connected, like I was saying, I was waking up, I was feeling things that were like, I didn't feel well. It was like, what's going on in the world? And I said, you know, I've been riding my bike in the mornings and my body hasn't felt this good and. I don't know, maybe a decade or two. And, but that day I woke up, I said, something's wrong. I was feeling not just what was going on in me. I was feeling what was going on around me. And so when, when you see these kind of events happen to you, you should put it in perspective rather than looking at what happened to me. Look at the person who had to do this, right? Their state of consciousness and they didn't find what they want. And they're gonna to go to the next person to do it. And it could mean their life. That could be the person that the police come by and shoot this person. They didn't have a weapon, they were running away. I mean, there's so many chaotic things because we, they, what was the statement? In the midst of a storm, there's an element of peace. And that peace is Krishna, <laughs> right? Saintly personalities. And so we have to take a look at ourselves. Like you move to a location to have that incident happen. <laughs> I mean, you have to factor those things in. And then what other things are you being told? What do you need to be attentive to? Is it, is it group envy? Like we have group karma? Do we have group envy? Because we do criticize other things. And so in that criticism, now we're having to get a small portion because just imagine if you had a nicer car and you had items in the car you're really attached to, you know, just imagine those kind of things. So this helps to put that in perspective, all these things in this ladder and that we have to turn around and start walking in a, in a different direction, in a northerly direction, so to speak. So it's something to take reflections. And I also want to uh, drop something in my own Guru Maharaj when he says, you, this is applied spiritual technology. Mm. So you can kind of monitor your emotional state and the message that you can move from. 
And that's not to say, I'm, I don't want anybody to misconstrue this. I'm not saying you shouldn't be angry. It's what you do with the anger, just like Hanuman. <laughs> what are you gonna do with that anger, right? What are you gonna do? What is the message? Like, is it my fault I'm in this material world? Or is it my assignment to be in the material world and be a part of this Harinam Sankirtan movement? So it's just where you wanna place your consciousness and see, am I gonna be hindrance or am I gonna be help? And we just need devotional reminders. And that's what these platforms do. They help us to reset us so that we can, because there's many machinations of your story. You know, do you wanna go through all of them, you know, that are gonna be devotional or do you wanna go through all the ones that are gonna be you can find a lot of supporters like yeah that happened to you you can feel a little you know negative about things in the world or these people now i can be these people <laughs> these people i live in an area with these people this is what they do so it becomes labeled and you're not really seeing them in a situation for my purification thank you that was very insightful and very timely and uh, very thought-provoking. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Right. We've got about 19 minutes left. Is there anyone else who had a comment, correction um, on this topic? <clears throat> Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Um, thank you so much. Uh, very nice class. And uh, um, even I was wondering like, uh, all these things happening around us, we, we look at them and we see, we feel little compassion about others who are suffering. Um, but we don't actually feel in our hearts like, uh, because until it happens to us, uh, we don't react much. And um, if, if uh, we see a like, lot of people are suffering, we know that such an, okay, we didn't get it right. We are not facing it right right now, suppose even for COVID also. We feel bad for those people, or we feel sad for we pay also for those people who got corona, and but but uh, deep down inside, we don't feel any um, effect going on in our lives uh, until we get it, so until we experience it. So um, how is it like that, uh, Prabhuji? And how to actually feel uh, like how in empathy towards others? Uh, yes, um, <clears throat> that's a good point. Um, Bhakti Tirtha Swami gets into that, but I want to see. Sometimes we quote things, and we don't we don't kind of enter the room of the quote. And I'm going to quote this: "Banchikal Bhakuru Vishcha, Kiri Pasindu Behavita, Patiti Nam Padavi Lo Vaishnavo Mona." So Vaishnavas are like Kalpa Vriksha trees; they have compassion, and the reason why you have and you can you can think that way. Is because you don't see yourself non-different as a soul self from those who are suffering. See, we forget the day we suffered or the time we suffered. We forget the past lives getting up to this point. So even Prahlad Maharaj, he didn't want to even leave the material world. He wanted to make sure that all living entities, this is also true in the Lord Taitanya pastimes. So what is our mission? Our mission is to help raise the consciousness. So if we are more invested, and I'm not, I'm not meaning to be so attached to, well, this person has to change. All you have to do is put the vibration out. So when you're chanting your jampa, this is the point where you can care for others. Because you're not just chanting for yourself. You're chanting for this planet. You're chanting, chanting for your family. You're chanting for the plants in your house. You're chanting for the molecules in the air. We, we know scientifically that sound vibration on that subtle plane has a tremendous impact, right? For instance, if I use uh, foul language toward you, you're off, the ch you're, off the <laughs> you're off the chat, right? Right, so I just said words, right? We know this, <clears throat> that it's also in the Bhagavatam that, you know, sometimes harsh words from your family are worse than a wound from an enemy, like a sword wound or something like that. So we have to understand that we are in the business of feeling, right? 
emotions, transcendental emotions. This is what's getting us out of the gross matter. See, it's the manifestation of the thought that creates the, the gross dense energy, right? So when we see like um, you hear, oh, such and such person's in a hospital. Can we chant the Hare Krishna Ma mantra? So here's what we can do. Here's an exercise. For the 12 of us that are on this, this Zoom call, we can all chant Hare Krishna for the whole planet, not just for ourselves. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Is for everyone. So when we're chanting Hare Krishna, and this is a good way to chant extra rounds, if you want to chant, make sure you chant those rounds, you chant them for everyone. When I ride my bike, I'll ride for an hour or two hours. I don't have Japa beads, but I'm going with cadence. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. So I'm chanting, so I'm chanting for my pr protection, right? I'm chanting for my protection. And so the other thing that you can do, chant for your protection, um, you can chant Om Namo Bhagavate Narasimhaya Namaste Stages Avra Avra Baba Raja Naka Raja Damstra Kamashayan Radaya Radaya Tamo Grasa Grasa Om Swaha Abayam Abayam Atmini Bujista Om Scrum. So we can we can we can be chanting. I offer my respectful obeisance to the Lord Nishingade, the source of all power. Oh my Lord, who possesses nails and teeth just like thunderbolts, kindly vanquish our demon-like desires for fruitive activities in this material world. Please appear in our hearts and drive away our ignorance so that by your mercy, we may become fearless in the struggle for existence in this material world. That's a daily prayer. It didn't say I, it said our. It didn't say I, it said we. So when you're chanting the ma ma mantra, you're also chanting for all the other living entities in your body. So it's not, it's not a, even though it's individual japa, it's still a weak japa. And then when you're doing kirtan, then you can see those physical forms. So when we're chanting, we should be mindful that the chanting is not only the purification of me, but it's the purification of others. And that when you're, that meditation and the hearing when you're doing that, that's how it can be effective. And then it's reflected in your demeanor. People will see you a certain way because you're vibrating a certain level of energy, which is Krishna's, we are the, the um, energies and he's the energetic, <laughs> okay? So you're reflecting, you're trying to reflect the, the, the energetic as an energy of the Lord, okay? So it's just a meditation, understanding that you can choose to be connected. You can turn on all like, you know, I'm not feeling this way. Then you tell yourself, let me give compassion for the fallen conditioned souls. And when you do that, you become com more compassionate to yourself. Even, even Yeshua of the Christ says, love thy neighbor as thyself, right? Love thy neighbor. And if you don't have, if you don't love yourself, you can't love your neighbor. So the more you love you as a part and parcel of the Supreme whole, right? The more is Prabhupada says, you love me, you love my dog, right? You start to love more and you can see that and you can see the discomfort and dis disposition of other living entities. And it's just there. That's where we have to have our compassion. We see how terrible it is, but because we are soldiers, we are spiritual soldiers, spiritual warriors, we're on this battlefield we can susukam kartum abhyam. We can we can engage in this service happily, right? So there's a level of enthusiasm, right? Ustya nishya daryat, utsaha nishya daryat. So we have a level of enthusiasm, patience, and determination that at some point is going to kick in. Just like when you make that um, those japatis, I can be right next to you, and you can be teaching me how to make those. Ma, mother, this doesn't pop up. Ma, ma, it doesn't pop up. Right? You know, just be patient. You're just sitting, smiling like you're doing. And then the day they pop up on me, I'm just jumping for joy. It's a patience. Service is service in patience, right? And we use the other patient 
uh, analogy or reference to being in a hospital, right? You have to just wait, <laughs> be patient. So we have to be patient, right? And we also have to be doctors. We have to do both. So hopefully I answered your question. Yes, Prabhuji, wonderful. Um, the standing for everyone uh, is the main key point. Um, yeah, it's we have to have a reminder for that. Like, as always, we chant for ourselves only, like purification of mind. But this is a new uh, new aspect, uh, which I have to focus a lot. Yeah, thank you so much. No, my, my pleasure. I'm just sharing the things I'm trying to do. I'm always getting different realizations how I can do my, my job better. Because I like anyone, I, I struggle sometimes. The, the part I don't struggle in is preaching. <laughs> I love, because I'm because Krishna is actually there. I'm actually not doing it, but I'm actually hearing things that I need to listen to. And I'm so enthusiastic. So this is this is the best part of my day so far. <laughs> so. Yeah. Hearing your class, uh, even I became more enthusiastic. Thank you so much, Roji. <laughs> it's, it's all due to the mercy of Chandramali Swami. Yes, he's definitely. He's so clever. He knows what he's doing. He, he kicks the sleeping dog. Now I have to bark. <laughs> Thank you. Is there, is there anyone else? Yeah. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Hey, Krishna Prabhu, please accept my humble obeisances. No, no face? <laughs> no face. No face. <laughs> Hi, hey, Krishna. Krishna. Kija. <laughs> it's good to see you. <laughs> yes, yeah, same here, Prabhu. Wonderful to see you. How is your husband doing? Good. Yeah, That's good. good. Yeah, we're trying to hold it together. Yeah, yeah. So I really appreciated your point that you said, like, you know, we smash uh, people with our words, like just like smashing a car. Um, it's uh, very um, graphic to think of. Um, uh, but it does happen because, you know, there are uh, many times like services which are overlapping with other devotees services. We have to speak something because we want to get things moving for Krishna's service. And, you know, not everybody works at the same pace. Some people like to work very slow. Some people like to work fast and get things done. So like, um, but we have to speak. <laughs> I feel like that, like, you know, how would we know, like, if we don't speak? But um, could you, like, share what your realizations are about it? And, like, especially when it comes to Krishna's service? Yes, yes. I'll share this with you. When I took initiation, I asked my guru what my name meant. And he simply mm -hmm. said, it means manager. <laughs> <laughs> so... The entry point of that is that service at a high level means good management. And so, like Sri Devi was saying, you know, about her car and trying to get the right part and the difficulty. Sometimes our services in our yatra is like that. It's like getting the good parts. So we have to remember that people are at entry points of relationships. So we can come together and we may be very enthusiastic to see each other. There's no question, Prabhu, can I do this for you? Mataji, can I do this? It's, there's no sense of being slow. You're enthusiastic. So what's lacking is enthusiasm in service because of relationship. And so we, we learn in the nectar of instruction about the different type of relationship we have. So as a manager, <clears throat> And you may, not, you may or may not be this management person, but as a manager, you have to understand. So when I do this service, this is the team that I want working at this level. This is the team I want working at this level and this level. And how am I preaching to my team? Because now there's some psychology and counseling coming. See, like that's always missing in management. No, no one ever thinks that psychology and counseling is important in management is extremely important because you're dealing with emotional beings, right? We're not machines, we're emotional beings. <laughs> Otherwise, how can we get love? So once we have the right match, when we're preaching, when we're trying to recruit people, we have to be thinking about, wow, 
this would go well with my sari. <laughs> you know, this, this, this beads look, you know, this looks, you're looking at matching things that complement, right? Until so those other individuals catch fire and they see that. That's the thing that's missing out of the teaching that we're doing. And all you can do to get better at it is sometimes pilot it. If you're doing namahatas, you're doing this. I've seen this done a lot because um, <clears throat> devotees are very, very enthusiastic. I'm, I'm reading Prabhupada's Leon Rita, and he's, he's dealing with his god brothers and younger devotees. He's dealing with all this conflict. So he's trying to execute a mission. And at the same time, he's having to deal with these personalities. So he's like, I'm learning this because once I start Ishkan, right, these are the things that are going to have to go through. And he had difficulties. And we still have our difficulties. But devotees were so purchased into Prabhupada loves me. And when there's love there, it's amazing what people will do for you in the time frame they'll do them in based on that. But you have to understand a person's capacity. And if they're at their limit, intellect, ability, whatever it may be, you're going to have to be settled with this is the capacity what they're what they're doing, and so it's let me give them, them some things which are not so time sensitive, okay. But that takes a relooking at your entire organization and also who you can bring in, because I have to work with these people. But who can I bring in? And that happens with this kind of platform. If we all agree on these same things, we all, hey, why don't we all try to start this? And we already come into the agreement. This is how we want to engage. So we have to, it's just like relationship. Um, <clears throat> okay, dear husband, what things do you like? We have to have that relationship. Okay, devotee, how, how can you, what kind of things? Or you watching that as a manager. I see you're very good at this. You know, maybe we can start emphasizing these things. So it's really just using your intelligence to see what works better and not be kind of bogged into um, paradigms, old paradigms, just come in a temple, wash some pots and pans. I mean, that happens a lot. And, you know, nobody really talks to me. Nobody really cares. No one really encourages me. No one lets me lead. No, no one goes on Hari Nam with me <laughs> like we did, you know, you know, those kind of things. You have to start thinking about those things that help make you enthusiastic. Hopefully I answered your question. I mean, it's a big topic though, um, but definitely like, you know, it gives some insight into it. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much mm. for your class. Thank you. Hare Krishna. I, I see Vishnu Priya is out there. I haven't seen her face. Is, is, that, is that possible? <laughs> Maybe she's doing services and listening at the same time. Are you out there, Vishnu Priya Dasi? <clears throat> Vishnu Priya Mataji, Hare Krishna. Maybe, maybe I put her to sleep. <laughs> she's, she's more advanced. She's, uh, these topics are putting me to sleep. <laughs> Okay, with that being said, we only have about two minutes left, but I, I'm <clears throat> looking forward to seeing everyone someday in person yes, with, with, without all these restrictions. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna leave that up to Krishna. Krishna can do anything, but it's so nice. And um, we're doing this again tomorrow. Yes, thank you. Um, I'll have to think of another topic or we could just continue on. I have more references. Uh, for this particular topic, but I think it's important because uh, it helps us to uh, apply these technologies because we have real issues, real problems, and the way is the management is how do we think about looking at things differently that it can help us uh, manage our um, Krishna consciousness in a way that someone's saying, please continue on tomorrow. Okay, we got one vote. So we can we can stay on this topic and I'll I'll um, yes yes Prabhuji yeah uh, this is a very important topic I think even okay. people are interested yeah okay so we'll we'll pick the same theme up tomorrow I'll cover some of the I'll do a synopsis 
and then we'll move into, and it, it, as a little homework, let's do this. Let's look at some personal, because what we can do is have more interactive. Let's look at some personal things, the applications of those envy, greed, lust, false pride, attachment. Let's look, because I think the best way this can help, because uh, my, my role, I do psychology, even in the prison. The best way that we can help is use uh, examples to illustrate how we can move through something. And, and then you can, you can take it from there. So this is the best way. It's, it's ap application. So again, applied spiritual technologies. So I'll leave it at that. I'll let you finish off, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. I have, a, I have yeah. a comment or rather a request of you, uh, Chandra Prabhu. Because you deal so much with this situation, you know, you have been doing this for a long time in the prisons. I wonder if you could speak about anger management from the Krishna conscious perspective, how you're helping, you know, prisoners, because they are coming in there with a lot of anger. And I would really appreciate knowing from you how to help people deal with that and how to overcome that in our own selves also, because only when you master it, then you can teach it to others. So I really would like to hear about that from you. Okay, so I will accommodate you. Do me a favor and let's bring this up again tomorrow. Okay. Um, and then I can, I can un unpack that. But I will say this, the inmates are actually helping me to deal with anger and tolerance because they do have all those things and I have to understand because if I match them with what I have, I don't accomplish the goal. I don't accomplish anything. So really counseling is more about how you are adjusting compassionately to the needs of others as opposed to the, I did this, I did that, I did that. They're all looking for recognition. Some, some, do you recognize me? And people are angry because they're not feeling recognized in, in, in short, but we can get more into it tomorrow. Okay, thank I, you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Um, thank you all devotees. Vancha Kalpata Rupyascha, Kripa Sindhu Pevacha, Patitanam Pavane Bhyo, Vaishnavibhyo, Namunamaha. And the Koti Vaishnavrindha Ki Chai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Chai. Thank you so much, Prabhuji, for your association today. Um, thank, we'll thank, you. Tomorrow. thank you so much. Likewise, thank everyone. And hopefully I'll be blessed by hearing from Vishnu Priya. <laughs> I'm going to keep pressing her until I see her. <laughs> that's, that, that's my mother's sister, so I need, to, I need to see the God family. So Hare Krishna, and we will see each other tomorrow. Sure. Thank you so much.